The Printer Block Battle Mega Kickstarter is over, but it turns out that in the process of exploring battle mechas, I discovered a problem. And it's one of those problems that you think you understand and you work on a solution for it. And it turns out that it wasn't the problem that you thought it was, but here you've got the solution for something else. But the actual problem is actually a much, much bigger problem. You know what? Let me just tell you guys the story about this. But before I jump into that, the Battle Mecha Frame contest with Thangs, Sliceworks, and ACD Filaments has concluded as well. And there have been a lot of wonderful entries. I absolutely love everybody who entered into this contest. It, it was, It's really fun to see the cool things that you guys made. And now... I need to choose a first place, second place, and third place winner for this contest. Now, I'll be honest, my choices were uh, largely arbitrary. I kind of picked first and second place, and then for third place, I took everybody who entered, all the remaining ones, put them in a spreadsheet, and rolled the dice to see which one would be the winner. But the first place winner I want to give to Silver Bear here. Now, if you take a look at this one, He's got a battle mecha frame dressed up in Barbie clothes. And that to me is absolutely hilarious. But it wasn't just that. He also took it and did it up with proper printer block. This, these are a bunch of parts from the Skyforce campaign. And so he took Skyforce and repurposed it to be battle mecha parts. And I absolutely love it. So this was a great entry, great effort. I had to give first place to Silver Bear here. Second place went to D Butler because he made this absolutely cool. He he also took Skyforce parts and added them onto there. But take a look at what's on the shoulders here. Those are not parts that I made. He took some skulls, added some printer block connectors to them, and made a brand new part that's just sitting on the shoulder there. I mean, that's customization. And so D Butler will win second prize. Now, like I said, for third prize, I was going to do it completely randomly. So I just took a dice, rolled it, and it rolled to a one, which means that the third place winner is, uh, I'm going to mess up the name, Blitzy Dung. But this was actually the first entry in the contest. He was the first person to upload. So I think it's fitting that he wins first or third prize, uh, that he wins a prize in this. He also used parts from the... Oh, there we go. He also used parts from, uh, let's see, those are beast parts. You know, he, he used Skyforce parts. He made an absolutely cool build, but he was also the first one in. Honorable mentions to everybody who entered because they were all very cool. I, I really love this one from Roger HV where he used the cockpits from Skyforce on the shoulders because they were the right shape for it. And it really created a great shape overall. So... Congratulations to all the winners. Thank you to everybody who entered. It was absolutely great to see your creative ideas coming to life with Printer Block. That's what Printer Blocks are all about. But now I have promised you all that there was a problem that I found with Printer Blocks. And yeah, a problem it is. So as I was playing with the Battle Mecha frames, I noticed that there was a bit of a problem, especially with the shoulders. These shoulders that were holding just so much weight on them oftentimes wouldn't hold well. And even when they held well, it seemed like they would shear away from their build, uh, from their connectors, and I just could not figure out what was going on. My initial theory was that these parts are holding a lot of weight. These shoulders have a lot of pieces on one side of them and a lot of pieces on the other side, but they themselves are having to hold all that weight themselves. So I thought, what obviously what I need is a stronger connector. Now, I should mention that for a while now, I have not made my connectors out of PLA. I've been making my connectors out of PETG because they, they tend to last a little bit longer. They flex and snap their position, whereas PLA, you get two or three connections and then they tend to permanently deform. But just to make things simpler on myself, I don't like to swap out PLA and PETG. And yes, I could just do everything in PETG, but I got a lot of PLA and I really like silk PLA. 
So I load the Silk PLA into some of my 3D printers, like my FlashForge or Bamboo Lab 3D printers, and I print the blocks on them. But then I load PETG on my Prusa printers, and I just have them print a bunch of connectors for me. So that's that's my modus operandum right now. Some printers print connectors and some printers print blocks. That way I don't have to switch between high temp and low temp filaments and worry about blockages and things like that. Remember that. It'll come in important later. But I thought, okay, obviously I just need a tighter connector. Let me grab my oversized print of blocks for demonstration purposes. And in fact, here's one that I have printed sliced so that we can see into the connector and see what's going on. Now, oh, you guys might remember, if you've been around for a while, that my connectors used to have this kind of rounded shape to them, but I realize that if I make them with a little bit of an H shape, a little bit of a tighter turn there, that there is more area that that specific width that will bend and flex properly and that these ones would work better. And these are the standard connectors that I use all the time. They snap in and hold in just fine. They are good connectors and work well. But what I wanted to design was a connector that while having the same approximate H shape on the side, stuck out a little bit more, had a little bit more contact area with the internal ridges that they were going to have to snap onto. This new tighter connector actually has negative tolerances. So you'll notice that when it snaps in, it first of all is too big for the hole. It has to deform just to go in. And then once it goes in, once it snaps in, it is in constant tension there. It needs to have constant pressure being put on it the whole time. My green screen is not happy. Sorry about that. But it needs that constant pressure being held onto it, which means that it's under constant tension. So these tighter connectors are a part of the Battle Mecha frame. I will be uploading them where everybody can get at them as well. But remember with these tighter connectors, because they're under constant tension, you first of all do not want to print them in PLA. They will deform and just squish into there. And then also, you don't want to use them for everything. They are harder to use because they're bigger than the holes, because they require more effort to put in. You want to use these at critical junctures, critical junctures like, well, like the shoulders and the legs and the hips, places where it's going to be holding a lot of weight, places where you're probably not going to be disconnecting it very often. But the decorative elements, the shoulders and things like that, the parts that you're just putting on there, use regular connectors for those. That's, that's the strategy of using the tighter connectors. So I printed off a couple of these tighter connectors. And I should mention, these tighter connectors have a different center point. They're wider. They stick out, you can see, like that, so that they can be visually, you know, there's not a whole lot of difference between these and a regular connector, especially at normal size. So that wider middle there is so that you can look at them and go, oh, that's a tighter one. Oh, that's a regular one. So that's the strategy there. So I printed out a couple of these and I tried them out. And as I was working, they were working okay, but not as good as I was hoping they would. There was clearly something else wrong. So to do a test, I decided I would employ the scientific method and actually come up with a theory and test it out. So I printed out some more blocks. I printed out regular blocks. I printed out half blocks and I printed these out sliced, cut open so that I could see the connectors work and maybe get some idea of what was happening inside of them. And what I discovered when I put these together with regular connectors was the best darn connections I have ever ever seen these are amazing they hold strong they don't have that shearing problem that i was seeing where it would where it would pull away at an angle they either hold or they don't hold why why is this so good and for a while this is where i was stuck <laughs> they're just they're good they're fine there's nothing wrong what could be the problem but then i realized that the blocks that i was having problems with were not regular blocks or half blocks. They were the new ball joint blocks and the new head blocks that they were connecting to. And so I thought, 
I don't know, is there something different about those? So I printed out a ball joint block. Sorry, my connectors are, are green. I printed out a ball joint block. I put it in there and I discovered the problem. You can't see it on camera. So we're going to switch over to Blender here real fast and show you the problem. Here I have in Blender the regular block, the half size block, and one of the new ball joint blocks. Okay, and if we come to the other side, I've sliced these open just like I did with the regular blocks. And I have here a connector that can fit into them. So if we slide the connector in here and notice that as it gets close to this edge, it's going to have to flex and pop and pop past there. These connectors work great. In fact, if I make sure that this is exactly zero in the Z, that's about what we expect. Keep in mind that the difference between the ideal in the system and an actual 3D print can be about 0.2 millimeters off. So this might be a little bit tighter. This might be a little bit taller. It could be slightly different. But if we look at them, this is what an ideal connection is supposed to look like. Now let's go take a look at the ball joint part here. And if we look really close, you might not be able to tell the difference unless I move between them real fast. So let's go over here. Do you see how this connection? Get that into your mind right there. Now let's go over to the other one. Do you see the difference? I was able to see it in the physical ones that I was looking at. There is right here a bigger gap than over here. This gap is much smaller. This gap is much bigger. And, and I was confused. I was puzzled. I was perplexed. Why? Why did I change it? Why did I make this so that it was 0.3 millimeters taller? And is it possible that that's what was causing the problem? Well, actually, yeah, it's possible that this is what was causing the problem because notice what happens. I'm going to bring another connector in here. This connector is going to come in here and try to connect to this bad boy right here. It's going to hit this point where the connector is kind of being pushed by the ridge that it needs to snap into. And maybe instead of connecting, it pushes it up into that 0.3 millimeter gap that's above there and then goes in here. Notice that when it comes together, and especially if there's any difference in there, it's not quite getting far enough. And ideally, this should pull itself back down it should the stress of being popping in and popping out should fix it but I was not seeing that I was seeing that these were in fact being pushed in further than they were supposed to but that they weren't being pulled back out now the good news is that the tighter connector actually does a better job of overcoming this problem but I was perplexed when did I add this 0.3 millimeter gap well, I knew why I had probably added it because like I said, the difference between the ideal in the software and the reality of a 3D print is sometimes as much as 0.2 millimeters. And I was trying to take advantage of that slop, that tolerance and put enough space so that this wouldn't be a problem. Also, remember that I said that I was printing my blocks on one 3D printer and my connectors on another 3D printer. And sometimes the differences between two different manufacturers slight. And of course, everybody is trying to get their machines to be within real life tolerances, within real life standards. But it's possible that my Prusa was making my connectors ever so slightly smaller and my Flash Forge was making them ever so slightly bigger and that that was causing that disjoint to happen as well. But at the time, I was worried that this 0.3 gap was going to be affecting everybody. And so I went through my collection of blocks to figure out when I added this 0.3 millimeter gap and I added it about the time that I created the H connector. During the time that I created the H connector, the less round connector from the original connector that I had, I also rejiggered the hole just a little bit. Not, not enough. I didn't think it was going to affect anything, but uh, apparently I was wrong. And I went through the entirety of Skyforce, all of the blocks for Skyforce. And in fact, most of the blocks that I have recently uploaded to Thangs and Printables and Thingiverse and everywhere, video on the cards about that, all of those blocks 
are off as well. This means that I have hundreds of blocks that have the hole that's slightly deeper. And at this point, I went into a panic. I was ready to just, this is going to take days, weeks even of me re-exporting the, the new blocks, making sure that they're all named properly, uploading them to every single repository I uploaded them to. I was overwhelmed and panicked. But then I remembered, then I remembered that by printing them on different machines, I was possibly exacerbating the problem. And so I did a test. I printed out connectors and blocks on the same 3D printer. And when I snapped them together, yes, I could push them in a little bit too far, depending on the printer that I was using. But a lot of times when I snapped the block in, it pulled them back out, which means that this ended up being not as big of a problem, but it's still something that I am going to want to go through and fix in the future. But the upshot of this story is now that I've told you all that there is a problem with the blocks, I did fix this in all of the releases for battle mechas. So all of the battle mecha parts have the correct connector, except for the battle mecha frames, which I uploaded before the Kickstarter and didn't know that that problem was in there. I better get on prioritizing fixing that one. But for now, let's just say, okay, that one is, is needs to be fixed, but all the battle mecha, battle mecha propers, they are fixed. And I will go through and fix the old ones eventually, but it's not as high a priority, but I did create a tighter connector that doesn't, necessarily solve this problem if you are like me using diff two different 3d printers to print your connectors and your blocks with although it does help but it also allows you to make tighter connections in critical parts so despite not being the solution to this problem it's still a pretty good solution and actually solves a lot of the problems that you might have been running into so overall we got a solution that works and I've got some homework to do after this point. But I hope that you guys will check out the tighter connectors. Thank you, everybody who entered the Battle Mecha frame. Thank you, everybody who backed the Battle Mecha Kickstarter. These are some of the coolest models that have been made for Printer Block, and I was super excited to make them for you all and get them into your hands. It was it was awesome. And there are still a lot of cool things that can be done with them, as we saw with the Battle Mecha Frame contest. You can just make your own and do some cool stuff. So this is a new world of printer blocks that I'm excited to explore and see you all explore. But that's it for today. I want to thank you very much for watching and remind you, you are a child of God. So you're special to me. So take care of yourself. And if you can, someone else too. I'll see you next time.